Henry the helicopter pilot. Henry the soldier. Henry out for a day on the river. Henrius Maximus, the imperial lizard. Or Sven Hendrickson, the Viking warrior, a bold, brave adventurer. Yes, this is really me, tough, manly, yet deeply confused. In some animals, the right helmet is the difference between life and death. Take the cassowary, for example. When a cassowary races through the jungle, if it didn't have a reinforced head covering, it would be knocking itself out all the time on low-hanging branches. She's no fashion victim. This little bird has an armored helmet, too. She does? Sure, you'll see. Really? See it yet? I get it. Neat. Birds will find any place to nest as long as they're safe. <laughs> Being ever so armored, there's no place like home. Oh, boy. Excuse me. What happens when you outgrow your home? Well, you know, that does happen. For instance? You see, nature has created some amazing ways for animals to exchange their armored outfits for a larger size. Watch how this lobster does it. Hey, is he naked underneath? Should we shut our eyes? That's okay. He's got a new skin under that old one. Nice and shiny. Here's an instant replay. Lobsters aren't the only creatures to shed their old skin for new. I know what's coming next. Snakes! A Honduran milk snake, to be precise. I do love it when you're precise. Getting out of the old skin isn't easy, but the snake secretes a milky fluid that helps him slip out of it with a struggle. This is weird. It's just like he's a brand new animal underneath, all clean and fresh. Some people used to think that snakes never died, and that when they shed their skin, it was really a new snake being born. Excuse me, that's amazing. It looks just like it's been freshly painted, and the paint's still wet. It's a really amazing animal, even if it is a snake. But watch where you're flicking that tongue. It's time for your special report. Henry, time for your report. Come here. You're ready, aren't you? Now? We're waiting for your report on the hermit crab. You are prepared, aren't you? My report is on, um, how the hermit crab got its name. You see, there was this crab. Not cab, crab. Like this guy right here. Right. Well, you'll never see a crab smile. Because they've got no teeth. <laughs> but they have got claws. <laughs> Not Santa Claus, Crab Claws. Well, the hermit crab was in the real estate trade. Not heel estate, real estate. No, not heel estate, real estate. Will you get it right? Get it right? This is a shocking display, Henry, and it's starting to sound downright fishy. No, really. He sold his house and decided to move to a mountaintop and make a nice little home in a cave, like a hermit. Now, what's a hermit, I hear you ask? Well, it's uh, an old man with a beard. No, no, a man 
with a beard. That's it. As you'd expect, hermit crabs live alone and think really hard about the answers to life's great questions. Like, for instance, how come you can put a pair of socks in the washing machine and when the washing's been done, only ever find one sock? That's exactly the sort of question that bothers a hermit crab. But one question that won't bother you is how the hermit crab got its name. Because now you know. Henry, that was ridiculous. Your explanation wasn't even close. Think you can do better? I know I can do better. You see, hermit crabs don't have a proper shell of their own. They live in shells they find. A bit like hermits looking for a cave. The big question for a hermit crab that's outgrown its old shell is where does it find a new one? They have to scour the seabed for the perfect shell. Because a crab's shell is its protective armor. That sounds a bit like a real estate trade. Well, I guess it is a type of house hunting. But sometimes there are problems. Such as? Such as sometimes another crab likes the same house you do. Wow, that's no way to settle a housing problem. These crabs aren't gentlemen. You're right, Henry. They're crabs. These crabs are really slugging it out. And it's a left and a right and a jab. Ouch. In the end, though, no one gets hurt too badly. The winner gets the best house, and the loser, well, he has to keep on looking for his new address. Home is where the claw is. Armor is good, but it also has its problems. I think I'm just starting to understand why. Take these snails. They're armored. But inside, they're all soft and squishy. Good thing he's got a shell. For most things, yes. But over time, some clever creatures have evolved a way to defeat even the best armor plating. This thrush knows that inside the hard shell, there's a soft meal, and it knows just how to get it. The thrush smashes the snail's hard shell on a stone people call an anvil. Then it can get at the soft creature inside. It's escargot to go! Yuck! Armor's great, but only if it works, and you've got to keep it in good condition. These little birds, called oxpeckers, are helping to keep the armor of these animals free from parasites that might cause infection. These armored animals need regular mud baths to keep their armor supple. If their skin dries out, it cracks, and cracked armor is no good to man nor beast. Anyway, mud baths are fun if these young elephants are anything to go by. And heavy armor does make you slow. But just look at those big guys go! is definitely slowing down the tortoise. That's one armored animal I don't need to worry about. Na 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 na. Henry, careful. Ow! Won't you ever learn? Didn't hurt one little bit. Armored animals may be slow sometimes, but they're tough. Ah, here's a little one, a baby hippo. I'll show him a thing or two. Hiya! Nya! Come on! Know who the roughest and toughest animal around here is? Uh, you are Mr. Rhino! Bye! Well, at least he's learned something. Bye, Henry!